I'm Glenn Shang, the pastor of Tabernacle United Methodist Church, also known as Irma Tabernacle. Irma Tabernacle is located at the corner of Seashore and Tabernacle Roads in Irma, New Jersey, part of Lower Township, just on the northern border of beautiful Cape May City at the bottom of the state. More information about the church available at the website www.irmatabernacle.org. That's Irma, E-R-M-A, irmatabernacle.org. Our scriptures for this message as we uh, continue uh, the All Out series, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 through 23. Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 through 23, and I will actually uh, read them uh, for you. Um, Let's get started. Verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, or they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever you ask, uh, whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters. Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 through 23. The title of this message uh, in the uh, All Out series, following the All In series, The title of this message is Build Family. Build Family. And I want to let you know that this message originally presented on Mother's Day. Okay, Mother's Day 2017, this message uh, when it was originally given. I'll start off with a a little boy looks at his mother uh, at a wedding and says, Mommy, why is the girl dressed all in white? His mother answers, the girl is called a bride and she is in white because she's very happy. And this is the happiest day of her life. The boy nods and then says, okay, then why is the boy wearing all black? (laughs) Wives, be subject to your husbands. Yeah, what a way to introduce a message on Mother's Day, huh? Well, if you brought those digital tomatoes, then now is the time to throw them. We're going to be learning in this message from God's word about wives, husbands, mothers, fathers, and of course, Children. Part of this message is specific to Irma Tabernacle, but also is a general uh, view as we look into God's word available for everyone. God will teach us just a little bit about how to build family. Here's Colossians 3, verses 16 and 17 again. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. This is the core. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Now, I like how the New Living Translation renders the first part of verse 16. Let the message of Christ fill your lives. You hear that? Let the message of Christ fill your lives. The key and the core has to, I say it, has to come from God's word, the Bible. This is where we find the message of Christ. But just reading it and listening to it uh, in a a video is is just not enough. We live in a culture, even a church culture, where we can be filled one hour a Sunday or even 10 minutes or 15 minutes of a video. Yet by the next day, we are as empty as a car trying to drive from New Jersey to Florida on a single tank of gas. Down here in Cape May, you may be able to get across on the ferry, but end up getting stuck somewhere on I-95. Once you are in the process of being filled, and it is a process, then comes the doing. We do everything, one, in Jesus' name, and two, thanking him because we can. We take a step of faith by acting out in Jesus' name, giving him thanks for the privilege. Colossians 3, 18 and 19, with verses 16 and 17 in mind. Wives, be subject to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Colossians 3, 18 and 19. Now, I can tell you that women in our culture, yes, even in the church culture, do not like the words subject and submissive and subordinate, sub anything. But what does this verse really mean? 
There are two key elements to the verb subject or submit. Yes, it is issued as a command. Now, that may not sound too nice on the service, but the first key is that this submission is voluntary. Voluntary. The wife chooses to be placed under her husband. But in order to have order within the marriage, the wife is being asked to submit to her husband. Uh, let me be clear. The Apostle Paul is not advocating some sort of punishment for the woman who refuses. He is simply calling for this particular way of living in relationship with one another as offering both peace and productivity, doing everything to please the Lord Jesus Christ and being thankful. The second key to understanding this whole submission subjective idea is support. Support. It is a sailing term. The last time I was on a sailboat was over 20 years ago, and it was in the Philippine Sea. All that I remember is that I did a lot of ducking when the thing with the thing holding the sail went right over my head. I, I think it's called tacking, steering the sail into the wind to go where you want to go. Well, the city of Colossae, which is our scripture reading today, well, the city of Colossae is not on the Mediterranean Sea. It does sit right by a river. Sailing is in their blood. There are things, I told you I don't know much about sailing. There are things that hold up the sails called stays, S-T-A-Y, stays. There's a backstay and a forestay and a headstay and a jib stay and a here a stay, there a stay, everywhere a stay stay. When the Apostle Paul says, wives, submit to your husbands, it's another way of staying, I mean saying, support him because without you, he is just a piece of cloth flapping in the wind with no direction. Genesis chapter 3 verse 20 says, The man gives names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there is not found a helper as his partner. Genesis 3.20, the story of Adam and Eve. Now the last part of verse 20 can read, For the man there is not found a helper like him. And then we read that Eve is created to Compliment, compliment with an E, not with an I. Compliment with an E to compliment Adam to support him as a stay supports the sail. The wife completes the husband. Now, if I were to tell you that my then fiance, now my wife, have to get married, where do your minds go? Yeah, I thought so. We are living far away from the United States at the time, and, but our homes are close enough that we see each other all the time. We get to the point where we are miserable apart. We have to get married because we complete each other. Now, guys, it's your turn. We are called to love our wives. This is the love you promise on your wedding day. At least I hope you made that vow. Now, we just had a wedding right here uh, just uh, uh, two days before Mother's Day. And that was and is a part of their vows to each other. And it should come as no surprise that it is agape love. It's the love that Jesus has, present tense, has for you. It is sacrificial and selfless, caring and careful, F-U-L-L, -L, caring and careful, overseeing and overflowing. Guys, you are the sail. Without your wives to hold you up, there's no amount of wind that's going to move you anywhere. And husbands, never treat your wife harshly. Now, what's that mean? Don't say or do things that will make her sour. Ladies, think of it this way. If you remember the old movies, the old expression, maybe you don't, where the women come and say, wow, ain't he a tall drink of water? That's pretty bad. <laughs> Guys, when you treat her harshly, you are literally one, saying or doing stuff that turns you into a tall drink of bitter water. And two, you're poisoning your wife with it. Don't say that phrase you just know will push her buttons, make her angry or resentful. And stop doing those bad habits you just know drive her up the wall. You know what I'm talking about because I know what I'm talking about. I've got almost 20 years in. Now it's not 25 or 50, but we are not newlyweds either, even though we are still on our honeymoon. When this passage speaks about husbands and wives, it also can be understood as men and women. How we treat each other does make a difference. We all need to be one, supportive, and two, loving, and three, opposed to anything against one and two. And how we adults treat one another has a direct, I say direct, impact on how we raise up our children. And this is where the church comes in. 
as we live out Christ's agape love, then all the children here at Irma Tabernacle or your local church become our children. While we are not all married to each other, scary as that may seem on the surface, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are all part of the same family through him. Agape love means women and men of Irma Tabernacle or your local church function as mothers and fathers to our kids, supporting and loving and, well, those two are enough if we live out to them to their fullest God-intended potential. Think about a, a neighborhood. Maybe you had a great neighborhood where the, the uh, adults watched out for each other's kids, or as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism, the congregation, you, me, and we take vows to uphold and raise those children in the way of Jesus Christ. Now, while we do not like the term slaves and masters, the Apostle Paul calls upon we who say we are Christians to act like it. Verse 23 of Colossians 3, work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Colossians 3, 23. I realize we have many physical situations, different variations of households within this audience. It's difficult for me to offer specific answers for your specific family situation, your specific household. But I hope and pray that you can draw from the vital importance of loving and supporting one another here in the church to take it there into your home. Wives and husbands, mothers and fathers, women and men, girls and boys, sisters and brothers, of, in, by, and for Jesus Christ. If we do not live out the love in the church among the Christian people, then how are we going to do it at home, at work, at school, at life? If we don't encourage each other, support one another within the church body, then what kind of living waits for us out there? Now, I want to say here at Irma Tabernacle that we build family. And this goes beyond the four walls of Irma Tabernacle and the local church and out into the community our community. Now, I remember about 10 years ago when I had a vein in my ankle open up and I had to go to the hospital. Even though I was only there a couple of hours, I actually had a few visitors because the word got out. When an ambulance pulls up to the parsonage next to the church, people start asking questions. A decade later, I still cherish those visits in the hospital. In our worship bulletin, there are a sizable number of what we call shut-ins or homebound. In other words, those who are unable to attend worship or other activities here because of any number of restrictions, but they would love to be here. They would love to have a visit from you. I'd be happy to come alongside you. Give them a call. Drop them a note. Be creative. Take the next step beyond that all-important praying into doing. And if you're not part of Irma Tabernacle, your local church as well. Now, it's hard work living a vibrant Christian life in today's culture. But it's a whole lot harder going through the Christian life trying to please people. It's a whole lot easier and much more blessed to work for the Lord. He is the wind that holds the stay and fills the sail. Without the breeze of the Holy Spirit, no one is going anywhere. But with God breathing into us, there's no place we cannot go and no thing we cannot do. With God who is at our back and who's got our back, all things are possible. Amen. I'm Glenn Shang, the pastor of Tabernacle United Methodist Church. More information at www.irmatabernacle.org. May God richly bless you this day and every day until the day of his return. Goodbye and amen.